It's the 24th of April 2021 and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. And the entire gang is back. Adrian, Imar, Jeremiah. How's everyone? Good. Good. Uh, oh, that was a yes. slow start. That was a very Beautiful slow Beautiful sunny day. I'll do it again. All right. Yes, very good. Thank you. It's a lovely good. sunny day here good. in the south of the UK. And mm. yeah, it's nice. It's that was time. the energy I was hoping for. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's cloudy here in Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. Is there any, any uh-huh. bad weather ever? <laughs> No, no, not, not really. Here. They say there is no bad weather, just bad gear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. No such thing as bad weather. <laughs> just bad Especially if you, when you live in Ireland. <laughs> well, yeah, that's Ireland, what I was about to say. To if that. you live in Ireland, that's exactly yeah. the right thing. <laughs> along just the, the wrong clothing. That's right. Along the Atlantic yeah. coast. Uh, let's see. Oh. We have... Uh, of an episode about film. And uh, Adrian, you suggested that one. So... Take it away. Well, do you know what? This is for me. This is we're continuing our uh, detox. We had a bit of a detox week last week, talking about printing and and you know getting us back to something that's a bit tangible. And I thought it's a while since we've had uh, we've checked in like properly checked in into the, the the state of the nation of of analog photography. I can't remember what show it is, but it feels like a long time ago. And uh, you know, I thought that's 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 a good tangible thing, and and you know the world is is not where we were you know five years ago where everybody said film was dead. Actually, yes, yeah, f- far from it. So I thought, what would be a, a better way to to celebrate the the tangibleness of photography than to talk about film and things related to film. You know, and did you know, for example, uh, that as we record this today, uh, we've just reached the end of Polaroid Week 2021. Did everybody know about that? I no. did. Cause I've I... never heard of Polaroid Week. Yeah. No. It's, it's one, <laughs> of those, one of those celebrations of some. Sounds like of Valentine's time. Day. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, there's a link in the show notes. So Polaroid Week. Um, uh, for those who've, who've not heard of it, clearly, um, uh, it's a pretty big thing these days. It's been running since about 2006, I think, um, you know, in, in what you might call the, the dark days of the, of the death of film. And it, it is a week simply to celebrate Polaroid and, and other instant film uh, that you, you don't have to use Polaroid branded stuff. It's an instant film thing. Uh, and every week they have a special week where you're encouraged to post a photo a day to a special Flickr group uh, link in the show notes. And, you know, you just get a huge variety uh, of instant photography. Um, and Chris is scrolling up through some now on the video. Um, I mean, it, it, the, the variation and, and the creativity mm. is just, yeah, brilliant. Just brilliant. Oh, and it's yeah. and it's also in, in one way, it's a it's a it's a bit of a celebration <laughs> of Ed, Edwin Land, the inventor of the whole thing. It is uh, indeed. Yes. Yeah. So this yeah. is pretty cool. Cool. <laughs> it is yeah. pretty cool isn't it, it really it's is. you know uh, and yeah it's been running for 15 years now i think <laughs> that's started. the crazy thing about it so um when when did okay 15 years that was uh 2000 and 2006, 2006. 2000, they started 2006 <clears throat> was that around the time when the impossible project took over the last polaroid factory i think so i must think have been so. in I, that range somewhere I think it's yeah somewhere between 2006 and 2009 I think I can't remember exactly which year it was that Polaroid Oops. stopped Stop. <laughs> uh, stopped manufacturing and uh, yeah then the impossible project took over because that the is a, in, in itself is a very interesting piece of history where uh, Polaroid went bankrupt and then uh, the impossible project bought the last factory in in the Netherlands and then they started making new Polaroid film, but it was, they had to make it, they had to develop their own chemistry because it, uh, there was stuff in it that wasn't allowed in Europe anymore. Yeah, Uh, half of it, half the chemicals were illegal. (laughs) (laughs) So they ended up, uh, ended up coming, beginning with the black and white and different kinds of things. And they were really like hit and miss in the beginning in terms of the image quality and the longevity and so on. But it was fun to see that to be revived so it was a pretty good yeah, I, I remember shoot, shooting some of it I, I have a beautiful sx70 that uh, somehow <laughs> i preserved that i mean it's almost it feels new yeah 
Uh, it's got that new camera smell, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and it functions beautifully because you have the opportunity to control the iris, which is mm. fantastic. Yeah. And and I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, th- those cameras, the early version of it, I, I was lucky enough to experiment with that um, when it first came out. Uh, there was another company that took over from uh, Instant uh, making more uh, black and white, peel away negatives, etc. PN ninety five or eighty eight, I forget. Fifty five, uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, fifty five. They didn't last long. The problem, of course, was the cost of manufacturing. And once they went through the, you know, the the, the retail shops, you were paying uh, literally a fortune for dubious <laughs> quality mm, film yeah. at, at best uh, when you could just literally buy a fantastic four by five for example mm. um well well uh, do you know negative. what i mean the, all, all of this stuff you know it, it seems yeah you know, i guess we've all lived through this we've all heard these stories you know uh, over the last 10 15 years or so but the world of film photography is is nothing like that right now. I have to say, um, you know, I mean that the the Polaroid Week is it, thing is is just what, one example of a whole thriving culture and and thriving you know a thriving economic marketplace as well uh, of, of uh, that's all based around film photography. I mean, the, the film photography is now so popular that demand for film outstrips supply. There are global shortages in the manufacturing chain for for film. You know, around you know the the, the base layers that they need and things like that and there are you know it is it is difficult in some cases now to 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 get film um not horribly difficult uh, it's just just delays and just not quite enough and and there are and films are firms the manufacturing firms including kodak are actually i suppose i should say um uh alarish no whatever they no, whatever they're called these kodak days. alaris Alaris, thank you, not yep. Alaris, yes, um, uh, are investing in new infrastructure for making higher volumes of film. That is how popular film it's is. Crazy. And what and so so for me, this mm. conversation this week is like a complete celebration of film photography, right? We've been through all the dark times, we've done all of that bad stuff, right? And and come out mm-hmm. of it and the world is very different. So Polaroid Week, one really, really good example. Um another another week, and the links are all in the show notes uh, for these, so you can follow along. Who's heard of Camera Dactyl? Me. Sure. <laughs> Me. The 3D okay. printed cameras. The 3D printed cameras, yes. And and, and other other assorted bits bits and bobs. Um yeah, this is yeah, uh, a fa- fantastic um yeah, uh thing. Um so this is a this is a a, a company that ma- manufactures um started off manufacturing through 3d print i should say printing really rather than manufacturing things like grips for cameras and stuff like that and then went on to uh to make more and to actually make real cameras so you can buy for example did you know you could buy a 3d printed handheld 4x5 camera <laughs> that's smart yeah. In what, and by the way, in whatever glorious colours you like. Well, I, mean, I hate the colours. What is going on with the colours? Well, you have the choice. You can have it in all black if you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that green is lovely, isn't it? Come on. God, it's luminous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It, they, it makes them look like a little toy, um, like, I don't know, I think that's the idea behind it, right? Less, less intimidating. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, yes. Well, quite, quite possibly. Yeah. I mean, so, so. Fisher um, Price. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, they look really like a kid's toy. <laughs> mm. I, well, uh, good way to get a kid started, actually, wouldn't it? I've got another version of this, not by Camera Dactyl, but by some some kid who was experimenting in the Midwest, and I, I got him to, you know, to do a a handheld three D, printed. Uh, oh, cool. Four by five camera. I, th- I just found found it. Um, I adapted some lenses for it, and uh, he also made a Polaroid back for it. Oh, right. Mm. Was it was it the same guy? Was it Ethan? Because yeah, I, I, so the guy that runs Camera Dactyl is called Ethan. He's a great great guy. Um, I forget. Uh, yeah. I've spoken to him on the Sunny Sixteen podcast uh, yeah, a couple of times, um, and he you know he he's. He does all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, he, he even did uh, he even did one design where he he kickstarted it, or a, I don't know if it was actually Kickstarter, but he he ran a fun, a crowdfunding campaign, and he said, 
I, I want to open source this design, right? These 3D printing files for printing your own camera. I want to outsource this, but you know, it has taken me a lot of time and effort and I do want to recover some of the costs of that. So he did a Kickstarter, which was successful. And then he open sourced all the files. And so you can actually print your own camera, which which I, I think is amazing. Yeah, you do have to get a lens for it. You have to find a lens on the secondhand market. And of course, the lenses mm. for these kind of cameras include the shutter mechanism as well. So, you know, that, that's kind of how you make it work. But, uh, you know, you know just, just another great example of, of the, you know, uh, people just interested in film, doing stuff that they, you know, being yeah. innovative, being creative. About 20 years ago, I found someone uh, who would adapt what uh, I forget the model of Polaroid camera, the ones that came out, it flipped down and you pulled out the lens. It had a Schneider lens on it. Uh, it weighed, it felt like it weighed about five pounds. This thing was <laughs> all metal, amazing. And he adapted it for a single uh, slide uh, four by five, which I still have. And so you could shoot that on the street um, and a, adjustable aperture um, and speed. And the quality was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it, it's really good uh, uh, to take out. D d yeah, there's, there's some great stuff. OK, on to on to the next one. Right. This is uh, this is one I actually own. Right. So this is uh, the reality. So subtle pinhole six by 12 in this case that they, they make a range of sizes um but this is i, I happen to have the six by 12 uh, and the six by 12 by the way uh, refers to centimeters so your your negative is six centimeters by 12 centimeters um this is this is a glorious piece of kit um you'll notice from the photographs it has two pinholes they're on the thirds so instead of having one that is in the center of your film uh, uh aligned to vertically to the center of your film this is on the thirds so you can have your horizon on the lower third or you can have your horizon on the upper third which is a, a fantastic <laughs> thing um, it's just a great little box. Um, I've chosen Rea Reality So Subtle, uh, who are based in France, simply because I happen to have one. There are any number of great brands out there making, you know, cra crafting, I should probably say, crafting pinhole cameras. Um, uh, and, you know, pinhole can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's not fun with this one is it's quite tricky to load. But other than that, it's a fantastic mm. piece. Of are it's you, quite a convoluted loading mechanism. Are you aware that today, when we're recording this, Saturday, the 24th of April, is World Pinhole Day? Oh, is it? I knew no it was way. around now. I didn't it know that. It is today. So what is World Pinhole Day? I think it's a, it's a volunteer-run um, volunteer thing, which happens every day in... April, I think, and uh, last last Saturday in April or something like that, and uh, it is uh, it's just another opportunity like like Polaroid Week. It's an opportunity to go out to shoot pinhole and uh, take pinhole photos. Okay, the website is very challenge. The website is very one point zero, <laughs> but uh, this is if you want a challenge. They do they do a little can hand in photos. They are selected. Uh, they are they are like by by country and by region and so on you can just look at the exhibition in total there's a whole i was thinking just for us <laughs> for us a pinhole challenge i would totally be down to this because pinhole yeah. doesn't require film it can be it can be but it can be on a pinhole uh using a pinhole lid on your camera for example um that's right lots yeah. of different ways to do that but world pinhole day yeah, it's a bit late late as a suggestion for this year but maybe put in the Put it in the calendar Emer, next year. You could get a pinhole app for your phone. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. It, yeah. it emulates someone. Okay, yeah. So and so, challenge. Throw or, down or the or challenge. Or challenge. Cap, a body like, cap. Body cap pinhole is quite common and, and oh. could be used on any interchangeable lens digital. Uh, yeah. camera so so this is definitely accessible technology i mean i've chosen the the reality so subtle because i happen to have one um and and uh you know it, and, and it is just a joyous thing you know it, it take you know i don't have a box yes. camera you know like a kodak box brand or mm -hmm. anything like this but this this is my box camera right <laughs> like... chris tipped me to uh not just a simple pinhole but the what is it lenticular whatever the the wavy Oh, the the, the, the the zone plate, the zone plate. Yeah, the zone yeah. plates, uh, which are very fascinating to use, especially on a high-end digital camera. The quality and control is pretty interesting. What you get? 
Well, Chris, you, I, you have some his, you have some history with pinholes <laughs> yourself, don't you, Chris? And, uh, and is there any does. news around pinholes? <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, thank you for giving me the the opportunity to <laughs> plug something. Here. So, the the original there's there's there is the Marquardt International Pinhole, which is a, a pinhole camera that I uh, built ten years ago, and uh, well, I, I built it together with a craftsman, with several craftspeople actually, um, and it ended up becoming this work of love of a lot of sweat and tears and um, d there's like a little history there um, of, of like the development with different people from from woodworking to metalworking to leather to like a really interesting mix of materials and it ended up uh, becoming this um, yeah this this 10 10 cameras just 10 cameras with 10 different woods and 10 different uh, material mixes. And uh, that, um, and then it was kind of over. That was the plan initially. And that helped me finance all the, all the metal work, which was kind of the most expensive part of it. And then, um, but we still had some of that leftover. So the craftsman, the, the, the cabinet maker that I worked with for those cameras, he um, took some time over COVID and he has built new ones and we still had some of the metal pieces left so there's a new run coming out soonish probably well that's uh, good yeah so and uh, soon there will be thing. the marquardt international mm -hmm. pinhole day <laughs> yeah but the, the, the <laughs> thing the thing that's is this niche is, that is isn't it that's very <laughs> niche be very niche because of one main reason this is not a mass mass market article uh those remaining roughly 50 cameras that uh are being made right now. Um, that's it. That's all there will ever be on Ooh. this planet. So, um, what's the price tag for such a lovely object? Uh, <laughs> yes. Has that not worked out yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Highest bidder. <laughs> no, 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 not quite. Can... Not quite. But uh, over but at a rare item. Over at internationalpinhole.com, there's a there's a list to put your name on, and they're collectors' items. Oh. They they yes, are indeed. the first the first ten yeah. uh, certainly are um, now we are starting the inflation with fifty more but right uh -huh. they're about to be minted as NFTs That's yeah I think amazing. I think I'm going for that. <laughs> but 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 this is the first time that I've ever made a physical product and sold it and that in itself was even even with the product as in quotes simple as that because it is a wooden box with like really beautiful craftsmanship it's some metal parts it's some leather it's some attachment mechanism and uh getting all the materials together designing it putting it together building 10 different prototypes until you find the one that works um and then the whole the whole delivery the whole selling it and delivering it and uh and doing training around it that was that was a very intense experience so I can't even imagine what it must be like to build a car or something. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> must be Good crazy. Point. Okay, right. One more, one more camera, uh, and yes. then we'll move on and talk about film itself. Uh, this next one, uh, back to large format again. Um, and there are again, there there are a number of of small businesses and 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 Kickstarter funds that that have started that have built large format cameras uh, over the last few years. Um, I've picked Intrepid Camera, which is a, a British company, uh, re it's really amazing, for not not because uh, because the cameras are cool uh, for one mm. thing, uh, but also because uh, uh, they're they're also starting to move into to the darkroom space now as well. Oh, so yes. there, there's a lot going on there. So so this is the, the Intrepid cameras are, are full movement, large format cameras, uh, eight, eight by tens. I think they do four by fives as well. Um, but this is this is um, this is top top quality stuff and, and amazingly uh, they, affordable. Yeah. yeah, they really are, aren't they? The, uh, it, Seriously, on my wish list, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> that, someday. I, it's not something. It's not an area of photography that I have any any real expertise with, or, or even experience. I, sh I guess I should say. Um, but uh, you know, the, I, I know that the people that use these things love them to bits. Um, uh, yeah, neither do I. But actually, at those prices, like it's not off-putting to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you need. Really I, I think it, you need to buy try. the lens as well. So again, this mm, is another one mm, where you, yeah. you need you need to be um, uh, bit picking up lenses. Uh, mm. Most often, of course, you know, second-hand lenses which have the shutter mm. mechanisms built in, and 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 so on and so forth. So, 
So, but it, but it is. Um, I think you know the people that I speak to that are really into large format. It's, it's the amount of control and the craft that goes into it, and and the thought process that has to go into every single image, mm. which is which is part of the appeal, of course. Um, and, and we recall our our show on slow process photography. Mm. Right? That is. Um, very slow, yes. Mm-mm. Not it just is, slow, no, slow, not just slow. Also, error prone. You have to, because you have to with large format photography. You have to really be adamant step about every single right step of the process. And there are in this like twenty step process of taking one of these photos, there are at least seven or eight steps that if you don't do them correctly, you will not have a photo at the end. So it, <laughs> it's really it's a good teacher. It's a very good yeah. teacher for for, for yeah. process. It's amazing. It is. It is. And and so so I said as well that the reason I chose an intrepid out of all of the the, the brands that are in this space uh, is because they have recently uh, run a Kickstarter, not for a camera this time, but for an enlarger. So you can now uh, the, the it concluded actually as we record this it looks like five days ago uh, they they concluded their Kickstarter um, and uh, they got <laughs> massively over- overfunded <laughs> massively overfunded yeah I mean they, wow. they've raised uh, two hundred and sixty nine thousand <laughs> pounds wow. so whatever that is in you know awesome. in, in in other money re- approximately three hundred thousand euros or three hundred thousand dollars or something like that I suspect um, depending on the exchange rates at the time but yeah no, that, that uh, so you know you're almost a sort of one-stop shop there for your analog workflow aren't you and it and the, and the yeah. principle is genius because what they do is uh, in order to get to the enlarger they offer a back that they, that you can put on the camera so the camera doubles as an enlarger mm-hmm. so for yep anyone who wants to get into this whole thing without killing the the bank the, the account that is a very good way to do it and it's still very very uh high quality so yes absolutely cool. right uh oof. who wants to talk about film then right we've talked about cameras <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> next next couple of links and this this is you know this is a link based show but i really wanted to make it just a whistle stop tour through the world of film just to show how vibrant and, and energetic it is right now and those links um, are all in up, the show notes for everyone listening right now they are indeed links are all in the show notes. Ne- next up then uh first film is a film called cosmo photo um and uh this uh two two reasons i picked this um over, over, again there's, there's tons of this stuff going on so yeah it's been very hard to to to, to pick specific examples of of these things um but cosmo photo two reasons uh one is that uh i, I happen to know the guy who does it um i, I got to know him through podcasting about film photography so uh, and, and uh, yeah he's a nice guy uh, and he, he's working hard to make make this work and make it fun and the second is just look at the graphic design on this stuff mm. <laughs> right for those that can't see it or, or we'll, we'll click the link when they get home and stop traveling or whatever it is um if you if you think uh if, if you think about sort of soviet era graphic design um the cosmos spelt with a k in this case as well um you know that just just the design is is beautiful um, yeah, because yeah. you're showing the, the, the 35 mil box there. The 120 box is also really nice as well. Can I ask but, an odd question? Sure, of course. How's the film? Uh, that's <laughs> a really good question. Um, <laughs> how, what, what what question is that? <laughs> the, question the box is that? seems great. So um, the, the, hey, come on, uh, come on. If you drink wine, don't you like a nice label on it as opposed true, to it? Being, true. Yeah, true. There you go. Uh, okay. It makes it taste better. All there very good. Awesome. All very good questions. Well, first of all, in case I haven't said it already, this is a black and white film. Um, it is made, I believe, somewhere in Eastern Europe, uh, and uh, the, and the the exercise is a is a branding and reselling exercise here. So so the, these people don't manufacture their own film. Um, it is uh, it, it is a very it is a um, a, a great film. Uh, it's not it's a black and white. It's it's not particularly high contrast. It, it does have some some really nice tones. Um, and uh, you know it is it is again just you know, but but one example I could equally have chosen uh, you know the 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 Japan camera hunter street pan film or or anything washi else, you know yeah. washi uh, I think that's the next one on the list oh no it wasn't washi oh. in the end no I was going to put a link into washi but yes check out washi films because they've got some some crazy stuff going on um, next link in the list something a bit more colourful this time so that was a black and white one here's a colour one it's called Revo Log. 
or the company is called Ruvalog. Uh, they make uh, two brands of film, actually, one called Ruvalog and another called Double, uh, where Double is D U B B L E. Um, some of the fun, the, the, this is uh, low volume, uh, fun stuff. Uh, a lot of it, it has uh, special effects. Uh, built into it by exposing the film uh, to various different things and you can get sparkles and you can get you know um, ready-made light leaks and lightning strikes and stuff like that i'm sure some in a distant past i know how they do this stuff but they they take the film and they expose it, it not not expose it as in take a photograph but but expose it to to some chemicals and things like that it's pre-destroyed um, uh, film it is, yes. Or they could fl they flash it also, which uh, is exposing mm -hmm. the film to a little bit of light on that, you know. And uh, distressed is a good way to think of it. This this yeah. is color film that has been distressed in uh, pre distressed, so that you, so that you you know it's got some special effects built in, and of course the joy of shooting it is is you don't know what to expect. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, could I ask a, a general mm. question to everybody? Is what do you think? I'm not talking about the kind of uh, large format, slow photographer, 8x10, 4x5, deliberate landscape, to, you know, process as meditative, etc. I'm talking about the difference between getting uh, a camera, whether it's a kind of a, a cheap point and shoot or a expensive uh, or an old uh, Nikon F or F2. What do you think attracts photographers to using film right now to, as opposed to digital in terms of, is it uh, vinyl versus, <laughs> versus mm. uh, CDs or streams? Is it because the quality of the output is better, which is questionable nowadays? Uh, is it because of a specific look? Is it random? Is it a DIY thing? I mean, wh what do you think attracts um, people to create this now kind of revitalized marketplace for film? Well, let me try a stab it at that. Mm -hmm. oh, or Imar, you go first. Well, I don't know. I just popped into my head there. It could be the fact that um, when sort of digital came about that everybody just really jumped on it, embraced it and kind of forgot about everything they learned before. So maybe now it's people like me going, um, oh, yeah, that looks like so much fun. I remember that. And also because you've got a finite amount of shots on your camera, no matter, on your roll of film, no matter what camera that you're using, it's automatically become like more of a precious commodity um, because, you know, you've only got X amount of shots to play with. So you automatically need to be more intentional and slower about it. Um, I'm not I'm not sure that's the reason why. I mean, that that certainly is the my experience, reason. <laughs> but it's the experience <laughs> yeah. of, of doing it is really, really mm. good. But what is the attraction is it sort of what we would consider an evangelical you know <laughs> digital that is hipster bad. thing is it yeah <laughs> is it digital is bad analog is good i mean you mean like wanting to belong to a group being part yeah, of it being yeah in the exactly. in group? community mm. community I, I i don't know because i i i love shooting film Nostalgia. but i i would not instinctively grab a film camera and run out the door as a norm it would be a very kind of uh specific reason to shoot mm. film i think, I think the people that i talk to it there's two or three reasons uh, uh one is that uh for some people it's a process and they want to be involved in uh, as a, a creative process it's not necessarily about control it's about being mm. you know having the ability to go through it and create mm. from start to finish those people might shoot film and might have their own dark rooms you know oh, okay. that, that that sort mm. of thing mm. I, I think that. another is is the same reason that people people like record players right um it, it's okay. or, or or linked to it it's it's this it's it's a it's an aesthetic. It's you know, it it's a feeling of um, yeah, you know, possibly a feeling of nostalgia. And then I think the third main reason that I hear a lot is you know, you pick up a modern digital camera, right? Like the one I'm looking into right now, right? And and it's a computer. Mm -hmm. 
right and it's got a thousand menu options and and you know it 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 does lots of different stuff and that's all great right i don't get me wrong i love the camera that Mm. i use to make these podcasts and and to you know which i also use in my day-to-day work as well um i think it's fantastic but it is um it it is a computer and it and it does it it is it has the potential to distract you from what you're trying to do and i think a, a lot of the people that i talk to a big part of the appeal is simplicity uh, and and single functionness and and not being distracted by technology when you're trying to see something could could you relate it to someone who's into cars for example who loves to as they say wrench on you know a classic v8 engine in a you know in a a body they understand connected to a drivetrain and i I think it's even simpler than that jeremiah i think anybody who's nearly crashed because their sat nav wasn't working the way they thought it should (laughs) right Mm -hmm. that's the that's the difference that's the difference right you don't even need to be a car lover you just need to struggle with the complexity of modern day stuff and it doesn't make you a luddite right it doesn't make you a luddite it's not about yeah it's not about that it's not a rejection it's it's more of a preference i think for many of the people that i talk to yeah for for me that the, i have i have two distinctly different modes when i shoot film the one is the large format very thoughtful very planned kind of approach um and the second one is I also love to just throw a roll of expired color negative film into a half format camera and have 72 frames uh, available (laughs) and shoot it like it was a smartphone. (laughs) Just point and shoot and capture like a gazillion of photos. Mm. Uh, A couple of years Mm -hmm. ago, I got from someone I got, um, they, they cleaned out their lab and they had like 10 kilos, 10 kilos, 20 pounds of uh expired 35 millimeter color negative films i'm still living off that i just i just grab into that big pile get a couple of rolls out throw them into one of the cameras that are in in a showcase outside and then um have fun with it that's the other mode and I, i totally love this because it takes all the tech out of it if you go out on a sunny day or or on any kind of day then sunny 16 sim- simple to expose that no need for any technology there just one simple rule and then yeah shoot away have it developed in a, in a cheap lab and uh, a while back uh, a, a while later i have my photos back and it's always a beautiful surprise and i can probably mm-hmm. dump half of them but mm-hmm. the rest is kind of exciting <laughs> so yeah yeah hey, i think yeah. that's that that's a that's something I completely understand, and uh, I, I, I I've uncovered a box of <laughs> this is thirty year old film that I had put away from my studio days, mm-hmm. uh, and I I've, I've been kind of pulling stuff out of storage and getting rid of stuff, and I found it, so I just kind of put it up there. I think I'll start. And it's not, and it's not <laughs> just it's not just the surprise of uh, what's on it when you shoot like mad with that kind of film but it's also the surprise of what has it what has the time done to the colors how have they shifted what Mm, what 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 Mm. what do you get out of it and sometimes you get really amazing surprises that way sure sure yeah yeah good stuff okay right uh one one more fun thing to look at then um uh this is uh this i i don't even know how to describe this it's called solar cam Right. Yeah. Um, if you imagine a beer can, right, and and you put in your beer can some photographically sensitive paper, and then you make a pinhole <laughs> opposite that, and then oh look, Jeremiah's no. got the product. I've got a few of them on the shelf myself actually. Um, and uh, you you know, uh, leave it six months exposure time, that kind of thing. Um, wow. You know, uh, and it tracks. Um, uh, well, it's, uh, it, it tracks the sun through the sky through a period of six months and things like that. It's it's quite some quite phenomenal uh, images you can make with with these things. Um, uh, and yeah, yes, I thought if we go, we talk about long exposure. Six months is a pretty long exposure. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, so yeah, so um, I mean, the, these are the solar can themselves. Um, a, run, a company run by a guy called Sam, who's a really nice guy, and again works you know really hard. You know everyone, don't you? Um, well, I, I, 
so, so it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy isn't it because as i was putting together the the, the show a bit but for today of course i i relied upon the people that i know for the interesting stuff <laughs> right so you know i'm sure there are other examples from elsewhere in the world for people i i don't know and i'm completely not aware of what's going on so i'm not i'm not not trying to say for one moment that the, the whole of the film photography culture centers around my mates in the uk but <laughs> <laughs> Because mm. clearly that's not true, but they just, they just happen to be. But that's who we're getting. <laughs> yeah, it just happens to be the people I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, j just tons of fun stuff. Uh, we've talked about a load of stuff here today. We've talked about different types of cameras and we've talked about different yeah uh, different types of film. And, and, and we haven't dived into uh, you know, alternative processes or historical processes or anything like that. There's a whole world of that stuff out there as well. Um, it's just just uh, amazing and and if you wanted a one shot view right of of how vibrant the film photography community is one shot uh there is a a, a site here in the uk i would say again um which is a great place to go and buy film and they set out as their mission to sell every brand of film that is available globally on the market um and uh you know if, if you just go and uh look at their their website uh and just say you know, what brands have you got out there um yeah there, there's uh, so many different brands you know 30 40 50 different brands of film that you you can buy um and uh yeah that's plenty it, 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 it's not going away <laughs> oh, anytime yeah. soon <clears throat> oh there's brands i haven't heard Wonderland. of there we go. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, again, this is another mate of mine. Mm. Sorry, um, but but Paul works really hard. Who runs Analog Wonderland? He works really hard to make sure he's got the market covered, right? And he's giving people access to everything. And he will ship most places around the world where he's able to do so, and and where it's cost effective to do so for for, you know, the, for the consumers. There's um, so it's not just a UK based site. But. There's pubs in Germany that pride themselves of having 300 international beers. Um, this one is the British equivalent in terms of film. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Ha, yeah. ha, has anybody tried to create uh, digital negatives or DNs? Oh, uh, well, by for, printing for on contact, acetates and things like that. For contact printing, yeah. Um, um, I haven't done it myself, actually. I know people who have, but I, uh, I yes. So the, as, as I understand the concept is, it, is you take a digital image and you print it onto an acetate rather than a piece of paper, um, and then, then you can use that uh, uh, in an enlarger yeah. to, to make prints. Though it is, uh, you're oversimplifying it slightly because um, just to get the tonal range, you probably need, I mean, the people I work with in terms of uh, inks that I use uh, um, in piezo, they, they are specialists in, in platinum uh, printing of digital contact um, negatives. And uh, they do a workshop in Vermont once or twice a year. It's absolutely supposed to be fantastic. I was <laughs> going to do it this year, but obviously something got in the way. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, they have developed a, speci a specific uh, rip with their inks on, on acetate. So you get a full comprehensive tonal mm. range that really is dynamic and nice. very easily, not easily, but adjustable in terms of what your tonal dynamic is. And so the contact prints that come out of the platinum process are absolutely dazzling. And, so that's and the high-end version of... of, uh... of yeah. Of these kind of processes, amazing. Or the artisanal version of it, that. really. Mm. Uh, so it it melds digital and analog in a in a beautiful I've done, way. I think. I've done some experimenting during a workshop with. Um, uh, it was cyanotype, but what we did is yeah. we did large format cyanotypes and we printed on parchment paper and used that mm. as a contact medium, mm -hmm. which um, mm -hmm. when sandwiched well. And exposed to the bare sun, that was pretty effective. Also, also yeah. had a nice, nice tonal range to it, even on cyanotype. Yeah, I, I've done experiments similar, but I printed it on uh, on plates, which I think I've discussed, and and stone, um, mm -hmm. photosensitive uh, lithography stones, polished and photosensitive, and burnt and. Uh, you know, developed and then li lithographically printed. Uh, 
Developing a stone, what a concept. I think you like to make this as hard as you possibly can. (laughs) I think it does, and that's fine. That is totally fine. You know, I'm into process also and flow and uh, experiment. And what really attracts me, and it has for many, many years, uh, is the... That gray zone, if you, if you take a, a, a Venn diagram of classic old uh, art, art, artistic or artisanal techniques, whether they be Bronze Age casting, uh, you know, 15th century intaglio or 17th century lith- lithographic processes, but all of those things. And you meld them with the state of the art digital and the where you can overlap them, create something that I guess McLuhan would refer to as the medium is the message. And there's something beyond the actual uh, technique, uh, whether it's the kind of reach, uh, the, the hands across centuries that create something different, I, I want to even say greater than the sum of the parts. And there's a a tension in the visual experience of seeing it or holding it or or just moving around it that is very specific. And and that gray zone has always interested me as an artist. So that's one of the reasons that I've played in this field and have for a long time. I I think that's a a good way to to sum up you know, the the message here. You know, what what does this all mean for the future of photography? Well, I think there's two things, right? One is that the the pure analog film photography culture and marketplace is is absolutely thriving, and everybody's having a lot of fun. Uh, and you know, long may it continue. And I think the other thing, uh, it, Jeremiah, t- is, as a takeaway for me for the future, is the ability now to bring the best of digital and and the best of analog processes together in a creative way. Because for a long time, we had this whole thing, didn't we? Film versus digital, film versus digital. Mm. And it just isn't like that. that no. <laughs> it just mm. isn't. <laughs> Very true, and so so the future for the future of film photography is absolutely positive and is absolutely intertwined with all the other technologies that we have available as well. There we go, and that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> well done, thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to the picks of the week, and uh, I'll just uh, very selfishly elbow my way in first because um, I, I believe we have talked about this little piece of, uh, of, of history here before. It is. Um, it goes back. It's called the Invisible Camera. It goes back ten years, and it was an if. That's me ten years ago, and it was an April Fool's joke that a friend and I did. Uh, we shot a documentary about um, a, a camera that would be very, um, let's say, very revolutionary, built together with the Max Planck Institute <laughs> and um, a, f- a very um, special camera that could work like it, terapixels and so on. I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and it's, it, it, was, it was pretty much an exercise in, uh, in filmmaking. What we, what we had, we built a prop, it's here. It's a plexiglass box. This is built. Uh, this is based on the uh, Marquardt International Pinhole from a shape, and uh, we we built a story that pretty much ended up um, luring in people into a field test that they signed up for to <laughs> of test this camera. Of an invisible camera. camera. Of an invisible camera. Well, it was a plexiglass camera. We call it the invisible camera, and. There's there's me in the field working with it, talking about it, uh, demonstrating it. Um, we had a, a chemist on board who would make special uh, chemistry for it, and the film was very specialized. Mm-hmm. We invented directional desensitization. Um, <laughs> this thing was the worst fingerprint magnet ever. It was so much fun to shoot. It was it was a wonderful exercise in. Uh, uh, let me let me show you. It was a wonderful exercise in um, 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 storytelling, pretty much. <laughs> and it ended up we ended up getting applications for the f- uh, for the uh, for the field test from scientists, <laughs> from teachers, from uh, from someone high up in Hollywood in special effects, from like really a very diverse group of people. Um, and I mean, just look at the 
at the fingerprints on that box. I mean, it's, it's just good. horrible. Like it. <laughs> but Very it was nice. it was so uh -huh. good, and uh, I had I lost a couple of friends over this because they completely <laughs> fell for it. <laughs> and um, my reputation was pretty much ruined for several years after that because I could really do a lot of things. I couldn't do any more because people were like, ah, that's, a, that's just another invisible guy. <laughs> do you remember something we, we haven't talked about, just to, to jump back uh, for a minute, but uh, I remember being in Havana um, a few years ago uh, uh, with my wife and we were near the capital, the Capitolio. And, and there was an old man there uh, who would take pictures of tourists there it, with a big, large format camera, which had a built-in darkroom with chemistry inside the camera. Mm. Wow. Has anybody? Yeah. Uh, and the pictures, which I still have, they have not faded. They're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but he would take pictures yeah. and, and he would actually scratch you know, uh, a little word on the neg or I've paper seen, negative. I've it's seen a documentary about someone in Afghanistan doing this. I was going to say, is, is that an Afghan camera? I was, yeah, I've heard of that. No, I've I, never he seen he one built in real it life. himself. This but, is, uh, but I've seen, built. I've seen a camera made from red plexi plexiglass, which was, uh -huh. which oh. was, which you could shoot orthochromatic film in. You could. While seeing it being exposed, <laughs> and that was not a joke. That was a real thing. Wow. And what did it look like? Normal, uh, yeah, the images? perfectly normal. Yeah. Wow, anyway, perfect normal. I digress. Stuff. I digress. Anyway, <laughs> next, next uh, would be Adrian. How about you? Okay, well, in the spirit of the show, I've gone with a product uh, launch. <clears throat> uh, this is from Polaroid, uh, who we've spoken about uh, a little bit uh, in in the course of this show, and they are launching a new camera. Now, the the, the thing that's most the, the thing that's properly new about it is that it's tiny, um, and it, it this is like it almost looks like an optical illusion because I think people have gen gen generally have a mental image of how big or small a polaroid camera is and they've made this look like a normal polaroid camera but it'll like fit in your pocket almost and the and the prints it prints out are really quite small um and uh, just just ever so slightly smaller than square instax um and so yeah uh, polaroid are getting into the mini instant film and and mini camera market which is uh it just looks like a lot of fun to be honest doesn't it i've mm. i've seen it uh, the other day and i was intrigued for some reason tiny Teeny. tiny polaroids i mean they, when they you hold it up to your eye could it poke it out probably <laughs> just make sure there's no wind otherwise you lose all the photos and the camera it make you look wow. like you've got giant hands <laughs> 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 That's actually quite yeah. quite cute. I think I think they I think they want a piece of the Instax cake with a smaller format. Good gift, yeah. good gift. Yeah. And and, and why not? I mean, Instax is, is a hugely profitable line of business for Fujifilm, yes. isn't it? So. Oh yes, gifts. it is. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Jeremiah, you brought us uh, unlike, a magazine. Unlike unlike my normal <laughs> picks, this is <laughs> this is just something that uh, I came across, which. I thought would be of interest. Um, let's see where we are here. Here, why don't you just bring it up? Well, there we are. Um, how car chases have evolved over a hundred years. <laughs> um, oh, from from a from a movie maker's perspective. Th that that's right. Uh, I just thought it would be a kind of a, a interesting way that. Um, <laughs> Since we're talking about kind of old school techniques and new school techniques, uh, generally speaking, uh, film and digital and how these things uh, always, uh, they finally come together on the practicality of how do you get the camera to the subject um, and deal with it. So th the bottom line is, no matter what camera you're using, no matter what period of uh, photography you are uh, living in, uh, the fact of the matter is you have to have something to shoot and you have to have a, a, a way of expressing it. Um, so, And I, you've got to make I, car chase movies as well. And you got to because they're fun. And uh, we've been doing are, it a I, long I time. And, the, the, the link to the, to the YouTube uh, film in, in the, the magazine page um, 
fantastic um you know t- 10 minutes of pure joy watching how how the <laughs> technology behind car chases has evolved um and and for those for those of you out there that love a good ch- car chase this has got clips from bullet it's got clips from ronin it's uh, it's got lots of clips from fast and the furious which you know take them or leave them um but it's it's got <laughs> some really really interesting stuff in this so i was i was very pleased to see this link I will yeah. not watch it unless it has baby dri- baby driver in it. It has baby driver. In Does it? Good. Yeah. Okay, it has baby then I'll watch driver it. in it. Then yeah. I'll One watch of my it. faves too. That Chris. was a great movie I too. Love yeah. baby driver. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar love Wright movie. is a legend. Um, good. Let's see. Emar, hey, yours is the fourth. Yeah, my pick of the week is inspired by this whole thing actually um and just looking up all the different films and stuff and always um something that i'm talking about doing getting back into again but as we all know there a few weeks ago um my intention is to buy a new digital camera but when i saw this i just thought oh my god it's so cute (laughs) (laughs) i have to have it (laughs) and so i did oh you did get uh, one one of these Yeah, that's the old one. Um, show, show it's us, show us. Like a, a remake. It's at the top there. Yeah, there's silver and black one there. Ah. Um, so it's reusable, point and shoot, 35 mil um, camera. Cool. Cheap and cheerful plastic thing. Okay. Um, that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a go. I bought a couple of rolls of black and white film. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get it in a couple of days and, yeah, take it out. Awesome. Imar, have you ever been to a, yeah. a wedding where uh, at the kind of uh, party uh, part of it? For away cameras. Yeah, people basically yeah. give those things. You grab one, you take pictures Apparently online. Apparently they're incredibly popular. Well, it's um, fantastic. If you give, say... And this is a kind of a sustainable yeah, version fi- of 50 similar... 50 guests, yeah. a roll of film, just snap away yeah. and then throw it in the in the you know basket when you Great leave idea, yeah. and yeah. process it all and you have the most surprising mm-hmm. and amazing pictures yeah, yeah. i did I, yeah. i organized something like this for a business event years ago and in the end you could tell the the, the one table from the others where uh, where one professional photographer was situated because <laughs> 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 he, com- <laughs> he completely blew everyone out of the water but it was really really a lot of fun uh, oh yeah. <sighs> about that A so, sustainable version is this, yes. Yeah. Absolutely is. So I guess that brings us to the end of this week's uh, The Future Photography. What fun! I mean, the, the, just the whole area of uh, film photography. As we oh, all yeah, know. That, and just the tip of the iceberg we've seen today. Just the mm. tip of the iceberg today, just a, a little run through it, just to see what all the st- some of the stuff that's out there and, and the fun you can have. I, I think it's fantastic and long may it continue. So everyone, mm. my suggestion, grab one of these cheap Ilford cameras or if you have an old film camera, go get, get it out, take it out, put some film in it and uh, have it developed in the drugstore around the corner. They still do these things. And look for our <laughs> pinholes next week, right? Exactly. And with oh, that, yeah, thanks, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Until next week, <laughs> bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs>